jam for you guys. All right, let's see who's online and everything. Bam, that was fun. Take some uh, some wind, take some air to do, that, to do that kind of a thing, but it's definitely fun and I love doing it, love jamming. So, okay, let's see where we're at. <clears throat> Boom, I'll just get up the live stream here because I actually wasn't looking at it while I was going. Hey, hey, Nate the Jazz Man, what's up, Jordan? All right, good. I'm glad it's actually working this time, you know? Like, seriously, I, I was hoping it would and everything. You can never bet on technology, right? It's YouTube would not let me connect last time. So that was a bit of a bugger. And I was a little upset by that uh, because I wasn't able to show you the screen, right? You couldn't actually see the notes, like, you know, the head and then the chords and all that. But this time it's like, boom. Uh, you know, you're able to see that and everything. So <clears throat> it's like, good. Then you can follow along with the changes and this will be a whole lot easier. Josh Barling. Hey, Josh. Yes. I know you from Facebook and everything too. Good to see you, man. James Berman. Hey, Jordan. Got you on big screen. Oh my goodness. And surround. That's amazing. I hope I don't mess up now. Oh, that's really cool. I like that. I wish I had a big screen, a screen and surround. Howdy. Hey, Jordan. Miss you, man. Who is Sig? Sigalivic. You, ah, man, I guess I don't even, I don't remember who you are, but I probably miss you too. <laughs> wow. Cool. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. We got some people in here. Wonderful. So I just kind of wanted to play a little bit to show you guys, you know, uh, what I'm talking about. Like, like, uh, kind of, yeah, sort of the end result. It's like, it's never really at the end with jazz we're never really there right we've never really like completed the journey and sort of like said we are there and we're we're gonna stop learning now it's like we keep going we keep going we keep learning and we just keep doing that um and it goes on and on we get better and better kind of a thing it's it's a lifetime it's not a it's not a thing that you can learn next week it's like a thing that takes a lifetime so yeah, you know what? One thing that you guys can do, <clears throat> write your favorite jazz trumpet player in the comment section. I want to know who your favorite jazz trumpet player is. That'd be really cool just to hear about that. I'm going to push my face off to the side of the screen so I can't see me because that's annoying. <laughs> and there's a lag because I'm seeing me like five seconds later. Wayne Bergeron, yeah, Arturo Zanival, yes. I like those guys. They've played together on multiple occasions. Those two are amazing. Yeah, I've been listening to Wayne a lot lately. Ibrahim Malouf. Mm, I can't say I know that one. I cannot say I do. My boy Wayne. <laughs> love it. That's awesome. Gotta love Wayne. He is, uh, not only is he great at jazz, you know, and he's been getting more into jazz lately. It's like he's the guy who really, really has accuracy. You know what I mean? It's like he has pinpoint accuracy in what he's doing. I really dig that. Uh, you know, I'm working on that a little bit uh, to be able to be that accurate. Um, just, you know, he's the guy that doesn't miss a note per se and, uh, and just sounds clean all the time. Just so clean, really dependable, uh, great player. Yeah, I like Wayne. Arturo Sandoval. <clears throat> all right. So basically, guys, let's get into it. And we're going to get into it with this tune in particular, right? And you can apply these principles in a general manner. You really can kind of a thing. <clears throat> but, um, but we're going to be, you know, talking about this tune specifically and how the changes work and how you can practice this tune and shed on this tune and, uh, and get good at it and really learn what you're doing. So, yeah, um, I've got it right here. I think everything's running smoothly. I'm just like surprised that everything's running smoothly because there's usually something that, that glitches or <laughs> goes wrong. So it's good now. All right. <clears throat> so here's my theory, guys. And it's worked for me. It's worked for some of my students, right, on Skype and locally and whatever. It's like what I like to do is learn jazz by tune. One tune at a time one song at a time right 
<clears throat> when we yeah don't jinx it don't jinx the uh, <laughs> the technical aspect i see that derek <clears throat> one tune at a time so it's like why would we do it that way well here's here's what you know you might fall into the trap of and i kind of fell in this trap a little bit uh you know for some of our more ocd like analytical kind of people you might think to yourself i've got to learn every chord change i've got to i've got to learn all my chords and woodshed through them every scale i've got to learn everything under the sun before i actually start improvising right and i remember even like jazz clinicians and people like that telling that to me they were saying stuff like <clears throat> they were saying this they were saying hey you need to just do it you need to improvise and actually play over tunes i remember them saying that you need to apply it you need to apply the knowledge right i remember them saying that and i remember saying nah in my head i was like i'm not gonna do that kind of a thing it's like <laughs> i honestly guys wanted to learn all of the scales all the chords and everything like that first um that's a dumb idea it's like it's it should be done all at the same time because you will sort of lose motivation and lose interest if you just try to learn all your chords and all your scales first <clears throat> so we learn music by tune like one tune at a time right so um and that's why it's good it's like it's good to learn one at a time uh because well i told you why it was bad let me tell you why it's good now it's good to learn one tune at a time and pick pick an easy one at first because it's not overbearing it's like it's like yes i can do this it's it's not like overwhelming and like oh this is gonna kill me kind of a thing <clears throat> it's like one tune with like three four five six changes you know different chords you can do that even if you've never done it before <clears throat> you can totally do that even if you've never done it before so you pick one tune and um uh, it's it's a bite-sized piece of knowledge and once you've learned it you can say that you know that tune and you know all the changes in it right so when you go on to learn another tune like your second tune it's gonna be that much easier right it really is it's gonna be much much easier because you're you're already going to know some of the chords in that tune you see the C7? See that C7 chord right there? You only have to learn that chord once. And once you learn it, and once you've woodshed it on it, it's like you can use it all over the place, you know? <laughs> kind of a thing, it's like, and learn it through your whole range when you do learn it but yeah you've got c7 forever <clears throat> so this is like a building process this is like a pyramid type of learning like you're building it onto itself and chords you're learning chords over time and so when you do pop up a tune on the stand that you don't know <clears throat> it's okay because you don't know the tune but you know the chords or maybe you'll know 90% of them by that point because you've gone through four or five, six jazz tunes at that point. It's like, I've seen a lot of chords by now. Even with just four or five tunes, you've seen a lot of chords. So the amount of chords that you don't know and that will surprise you dramatically gets less and less, right? That's what we're going for, kind of a thing. Gets less and less. So yeah, I'll kind of adjust my camera here back kind of point at me a little bit better and boom oh there we go yeah okay so that's why we want to do it one tune at a time right you want to do it one tune at a time now here's my three-step process this is how I like to go through it with people and we'll go through it right now it's like there are three steps to learning a jazz tune number one you want to listen to it you want to listen to it. You want to listen to it over and over again. You want to listen to the greats doing it. You want to listen to, um, you know, people on YouTube doing it. You want to listen to, you know, <laughs> Joe next door who plays the saxophone. It's like, listen to a lot of people doing it. But then, yes, do focus on uh, the greats, if you know what I mean. 
uh, listen to a lot of them and listen to the, the people that you want to sound like and that you want to steal ideas from them. Jazz is all about plagiarism. It's totally about plagiarism. There's a lick that I normally use in here that I forgot to use because it just didn't come up. But I stole from James Morrison a long time ago. It's a pattern. He goes... Some of the great guys that you want to steal things from you want to you know and plagiarize from and it's kind of a compliment to them when you steal something from them because then if they ever hear you ah he stole my lick it's kind of a cool thing uh you know i like it when my students learn the licks that i make up kind of a thing there's plenty of licks to go around <clears throat> and everything so yeah the first step in learning a jazz tune is you want to listen listen to people playing it a lot get it in your head Get it in your head till you could sing it because you've heard it almost like a tune on the radio. Like you've heard it so many times that you can sing it, right? So good. The first step is you listen to it. You listen to it over and over again. Step two, learn the head, right? Um, so learn the head of the tune. Learn the actual melody. Um, yeah, and the head of the tune, it's like, what is that with Billy's Bounce? Well, that is... You know, I'll play it for you. By the way, Billy's Bounce was written by Charlie Parker, right? So I like to listen to Charlie play it. I like to listen to Dizzy Gillespie play it. People like that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it'll actually probably be easier for me to play it here with the sound off now. It's a little, it's, it's weird. It's just I'm getting used to the whole improvising with just sound coming my way and looking at the screen and all this weird stuff. But, it, you know, we're getting there. Totally worth it. Okay, so here's the head. <clears throat> Memorize. It's like I'm not looking at the screen or any music. I'll even shut my eyes to prove it, right? That's the head of the tune. And it's like, also, I like to ghost notes in there sometimes. We'll talk about ghosting notes some other time. <clears throat> yeah. So basically, it's like you want to learn the head as step two, which means learn the melody. Like, learn that thing good. Like, have it memorized, but not just memorized. Know it so well that, like, you can sing it. You know what I mean? Like, you know it by ear. And then... You can see if you have it memorized, but it's like, don't sit here and push valves down and try to remember which valve you're putting down. That's kind of like how we did it in high school and marching band, things like that, right? It doesn't work near as well. Actually remember how it sounds and then recreate that sound when you're playing it. <clears throat> there are times like in the army band when we have tunes that I haven't played in a long time, like rock tunes and pop tunes. Um, and I wrote the horn line for it, but we haven't played it in a year or two. So I don't actually remember um, the notes, but I remember how it sounds. So if it's a son of a preacher, man, do da do da If it's a little lick in there, I know where the tonic is. I know we're in the key of G. And I know that we have to go to the minor six, six, one, six, one. Like, like, yeah, there we go. Let's see. There we go. That's what it is. It's like there. I can get it, right? Even though I honestly don't remember if that's even the key. But, like, I know how it sounds. So as long as I know the key, we can put it in context and we can figure it out. Lickety split like that. You know, kind of thing. <clears throat> So there we go. It's like <clears throat> we want to learn the head of the tune. Step one was we listen. 
step two is we want to learn the head of the tune, right? So that we can play it. Step three is the fun part. Step three is why you came here today. Step three is, is improvising. It's improvising. It's the fun part. It's where you actually get to show what you can do kind of a thing, right? So let's do some of that. Let's just jump into it. I'm going to move my face off inside here. I'm constantly like shifting windows in order to make this work. <clears throat> okay. So improvising. It's like, uh, yeah, and learn the changes too. It's like you want to learn the changes and we'll actually talk about the changes first as we talk about how to improvise. So um, let's see, where should we start? Spelling chords, right? When I say spelling chords, guys, what I mean by that is that we need to, um, we need to look at the chord and be able to identify what the notes are, right? We should be able to do that instantly. We should be able to do that without a lot of problem, without, without you know, worrying about it too much, without scratching our head in the middle of the solo thinking, how do we actually do that? It's like, I don't remember what a C sharp fully diminished seven chord is. It's like, if you would have practiced it ahead of time or, or figured it out ahead of time, then you would have known. <clears throat> so yes, jazz is about improvising, but at the same time, it's about like figuring out your stuff ahead of time, right? Like there's a lot of homework and education and thought that goes into it at first. So I just like to help people and, and, and think about that and put that out there, you know, as far as the how and all the thought behind it. It's like, here's the strategy. Here's what you can do to learn that, right? <clears throat> so yeah, it's like the first chord. Does anybody know how to spell the first chord? Some of you who are in the, in the fail stream, you know, <laughs> probably, probably remember or you just know, type it up. Look out, it's J Hey, Chris Smith is here, all right. Good to see you, Chris. Who knows the first chord? Okay, I'm gonna say it, because nobody's saying it. Maybe it's just the lag, but it is G, B, D, F, right? G, B, D, F. That is the chord tones. Those are the chord tones Yes, Barrett Foley got it, GBDF, <clears throat> right? Because the tune is in the key of G. Now, that doesn't really matter, right? Doesn't It matters and it doesn't. It doesn't really matter, though, when we're talking about the chord changes because the chord changes um, are different from the key. You can have a G-flat half-diminished chord in a song that's in the key of C, you can have that. So you're gonna have to look at that chord. And you're gonna have to play the chord tones that are actually in the chord. Not you're gonna you're not gonna play um, a C major scale over that chord. That will sound very bad. Don't do that, right? <clears throat> so the next chord, C seven. You see that next chord right there? It's like, can I point to it? This is this is harder than it looks, guys because I have to think backwards, right? But can you see that C7 chord? Here, let's do this. Right there, you see it? Good. It's like, how do we spell that C7 chord? Well, that C7 chord is C, E, G, B flat, right? C, E, G, B flat. I'm gonna make myself a little bit smaller here so I can see more screens at one time. Boom, boom, uh, there we go. So yeah, you see that. It's like C7 is C, E, G, B flat. And I'm singing the right chord, but that not, might not be the right tonic, right? I have good relative pitch. I don't have good perfect pitch. I don't have perfect pitch, right? You're, you're that's something that one out of three people are born with. And we can talk about that some other time. D minor seven. How do you spell a D minor seven chord? And can somebody also write, how do we spell a G? Oh, we already did G major seven. Somebody write me, how do you spell a D minor seven chord? Like we see there. And then how do we spell, here's the hard one, 
a C sharp fully diminished chord. Let's see if we can get it first, kind of a thing. So yeah, we're going through these changes. By the way, that right there, you know, ah, uh, this way, this, you see that D minor seven chord over here to the G seven, like right there, like that thing is a two, five, one, right? It's a two, five, one, uh, minor two, five, seven, one, seven in this case. And it's actually a minor two, seven, uh, G seven, it will, you know, five, seven and then one seven. So it's like there's different qualities of the chord, but in general, it's still a two, five, one, two, five, one, the most common chord progression in jazz, right? Okay, let's see if anybody got it. Yes, Sig got it. I wish I knew who you were. You can tell me your name if you're okay with showing your identity, but Sig got it. Um, yeah, so basically, D, F, A, C, it's a, it's a minor triad with a minor seven, right? Good, Osman, Osman, from, from Instagram. From Instagram? Or do you normally have a different name here? Nah, you can tell me. But C sharp, fully diminished seven, right? <clears throat> That's the hard one. That's the very difficult one here, or at least it looks difficult, right? But maybe it's not. Maybe there's a trick to it. Maybe there's a trick to it, guys. Maybe we can just do this. Maybe we can say that is nothing but a C7 chord, but with a C sharp. You know, it's like, yeah, that's what it is. It's uh, no man YouTube everywhere. I follow you everywhere I follow you, my friend. Yeah, hey, Osman, I really appreciate that, brother. I really do. That's like, honestly, I really appreciate it when you guys follow me and when you watch my stuff. It's like I, I don't like to, <laughs> to put videos up for no one. You know, they take a lot of work. They honestly take a lot of work. This took a ton of work to get together. Uh, and, and so I really appreciate it when you watch it and when you appreciate it and everything. Okay, so C sharp. Fully diminished seven is C sharp E G B flat. Yeah, C sharp E G B flat. Wrap your mind around that, okay? Because it's fully diminished, meaning we're stacking minor thirds. Like C sharp to E is a minor third. That's three half steps. Three. There we go. Three half steps. Uh, <laughs> kind of thing, right? <clears throat> e to G is a minor third. That's three half steps. Um, and then G to B flat is a minor third. <laughs> there we go. Also three half steps, right? <clears throat> so that chord is repeating, and we can talk about that some other time, but there's only, what, three fully diminished chords? Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, I think there's only three fully diminished chords in existence because they just repeat themselves, right? We'll talk about that more in a second. Then we have a G7 chord over here, and I'm looking at these chords. I'm not looking down. I'm not looking at these because they're slightly different. I'm looking at these because I found that I real D is a lot more correct. It's it's a lot more spot on. It's more accurate on I real D, <clears throat> even though nothing's perfect because you're you're transcribing things. Human beings had to had to transcribe this. So then you have B minor seven and E seven. I'll just tell you, B minor seven is fingered, there we go, B, D, F sharp, A, B, D, F sharp, A, F sharp, B, D, B, do, 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 do. It sounds minor, because it's a minor triad with a minor seventh, right? Then we have E7. E, and you know, now I'm kind of winging myself out singing wise. It's like, now I'm not singing the right pitches or anything, but E, G sharp, B, D. Now I am singing a dominant seven chord. E, G sharp, B, D, D, B, G sharp, E, kind of a thing. Do, 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 do,
now we have an A minor 7. Um, and thank you guys for watching, by the way. We have 11 watching right now. I really appreciate that. If you're getting value out of this, if you like this, could you drop a like on the video? Something like that. I really appreciate it. So A minor 7, right? A minor 7 is a minor triad also with a minor 7th on top. Just like the B minor 7. It's the same minor 7 formula, right? So that one is going to be <clears throat> A, C, E, G. Not C sharp. That would be dominant 7. A, C, E, G are the notes and are the chord tones of that chord. A, C, E, G. That's kind of an easy one. No sharps or flats. <laughs> kind of a thing. So, D7. D7 is D, F sharp, A, C. Kind of a thing. Kind of a thing, kind of a thing. I say that a lot. I'm going to try to say that slightly less, right? <laughs> so, D, F sharp, D, F sharp, A, C. D, F sharp, A, C, A, F sharp, D. Then we have a really cool ending to this song. G7, E7, A minor 7, D7. Right? And it goes by fast because it's only two beats on each of those. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's like on that one, I like to do a little bit of a pattern. And we already know all the chords in there. Right? Or we know all the chord tones. Because we've seen these throughout the piece already. So, it's... G, B, D, F, E, G sharp, D, D, A, C, E, G, D, F sharp, A, C, kind of a thing, right? Kind of a thing. Shucks, I said it again. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's like um, it, uh, it, it's a pattern, right? This entire thing is a pattern, meaning that, well, there's a lot of two five ones everywhere. It goes in the circle of fourths. G to C is a fourth. See, like if G is one, G, A, B, C, that's four. G, C, that's a perfect fourth. And then G to, or we can say D to G, and you see that right over here, D minor, that D to a G is also a perfect fourth. There's perfect fourths everywhere. The place where there's not a perfect fourth, and very intentionally so, is that C sharp fully diminished seven chord, right? Oh, there we're going in stepwise motion in the chord tones, which is really freaking cool. Like it sounds like that sound, that sound that you know as like the jazz, the blues sound, because this is a blues. Um, it's like that's what it is it's that c sharp fully diminished seven chord when you get that awesome feeling in your gut like yes take me home baby it's a c sharp fully diminished seven chord okay good so we just ran through hey vedu good to see you man awesome i'm glad that you're here i'm glad that this is working and thanks for coming i hope you enjoy it i hope you, I hope you get something out of it and everything and everybody here actually so we've just gone through the chord tones <clears throat> right now we know all of the chord tones as far as what the heck is going on in this tune it's like we we know that so what should we do next I have a little outline here I'm I'm following I'll see what I what I wrote for me to do um, so can we spell the chords yes now I'm gonna play it I'm gonna play the chord tones here so you can actually see and hear what that's like, right? I'm going to put it at a slow tempo, uh, and I'm going to do this in a few different ways. Like I'm not just going to, I'm not going to stick to one way of doing it. I'm actually going to uh, show you how to get just a little bit creative now. Not terribly. We are trying to play the right notes in general. <laughs> We're not trying to go crazy at this point. <laughs> we're just trying to play the right notes. We're just trying to sound decent. You know, <laughs> we're, we're not trying to sound great. We're just trying to, to sound good. To sound vanilla, but vanilla sounds very cool because it sounds like you know what you're doing. 
and it fits Ran rather than just randomly flailing your valves and and going you know i don't know just not with a focused plan we're building our plan okay so let me press play here i'm gonna minimize me and then i've got billy's bounce on the screen i'm gonna play some chord tones I'm gonna go through all of them here. I'm gonna turn the tempo down and I'm gonna put my fingers up so you can see my fingers while I'm doing it. All right, let me scoot this back there a little bit. Here we go. <clears throat> I had to play just a little bit, right? <clears throat> but there, it's like limiting ourselves, guys. We are limiting ourselves here. We are only playing so much. We're playing very little. <clears throat> but we're going to get very, very good at those little things. And then when we piece it all together, it'll be all the better because of it. So now, let's, uh, let's slow the tempo down just a little bit more so that you can really, like, see my fingers and grasp what's going on. And... Besides that, I am now not just going to play the chord tones straight up, because that's what I did. I'm going to play them going up and down, and I might put a little, no, I'm, I'm going to try to just stay to that. I'm going to try to just go up and down, right? And I'm not necessarily going to start on the root note. Ooh, oh my gosh, this is where it gets... This, this is where it gets tricky, right? Because we can't always just start on C of C7. That's boring. Sometimes we should start on an E or a B flat. We should start on the color tone, right? The, the color note. So here we go. Let me show you what that's like. <clears throat> Arpeggiating the chord tones in a sequence that's smooth. I'm gonna try to make it smooth and choose the right notes that are close together so that it's smooth. playing the chord tones it sounded nice like I didn't play any bad notes in there or anything like that and I was just going up and down the arpeggio I was making it as smooth and kind of as simple as possible but yet you know it's sounding all right yeah Donnie all right Donnie good to see you man you got to come back here to South Dakota so we can play risk again in my garage while it's raining that was a good time man oh my goodness and uh like, how late were we out? Maybe not quite as late this time. It was only like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. Um, okay, I've been waiting for this. It's beautiful. This bounce just keeps on bouncing, repeating, and every letter has four notes. Yes. Most letters do have, and in this tune, you're right, Donnie. Every letter has four notes. That's exactly right. <sighs> Thanks for asking that question, Donnie. It's like every letter has four notes, because you see how there's a little seven next to it? That means it's a seventh chord. So every single one is gonna go up four notes. Yep, sure does. And and it just keeps on repeating. Um, yes, it does just keep on repeating. That's a good question too. I'm glad that Donnie asked that. It's like, look at this. This is a chorus, right? This is what we call a chorus. Like going through, 
what am I pointing in the right direction? It's like <laughs> over here, the chords that you see on your screen, when we go through that one time, that's a chorus. And so it's like, you know, a guy might blow a, you know, blow on two or three choruses, like for a solo, or he might, he might blow on five or six choruses, like depending on what he wants to do, it might not be planned. He might just go as long as he wants and then kind of end it and walk backward and the rhythm section sees that and then they'll stop playing. Well, they'll keep playing, but for the next soloist, right? So yeah, that's a very good question. <clears throat> All right, let me do this again and look at my valves again and see if you can follow along. See if you can like do it in time with me. And if you want to play along, then you can play along too. I'll slow it down even a little bit more to 100 beats per minute and uh, and try to play the chord tones going up and down, right? Here we go. Can't do my spit. that one up right it's like I recovered but uh, what did I do I played like a G7 or over a C7 chord and I kind of like messed it up a little bit and uh, so it's like that's a skill too it's like you're gonna mess it up at some point see if you can get back on track you know see if you can jump back on the bandwagon don't freak out don't end your solo it's like try to make it not a big deal now I just made it a big deal because I just told you guys that I messed up but like you try to make it not a big deal when you're performing, right? Just try to keep playing and and don't don't give a deer in the headlights look ever. Like that's not a good thing to do. <clears throat> All right, good. So let's see here. We still got eleven people watching. I really appreciate that. Um yeah, so we just outlined the chords and we played the chord tones multiple ways. Um we're gonna save pizza pie for next time. There's a technique that I like to use called pizza, pizza pie. I got it from a jazz pianist and pizza, pizza pie. It's a pretty cool one. We'll talk about it later. Maybe somebody will remember and bring it up. Um, special chord. This is the next part. Special chord considerations slash licks, right? We know how to play like a machine now and we know how to play the right notes, but can we play um, over the really interesting chords, special chord considerations, and can we put licks in there that actually sound like really personal and really cool, right? And, and where should we put them and how do we do that? So every tune has a little bit different fitting, right? In that some tunes fit certain licks well and some tunes don't. Some tunes are like, they, it just doesn't make sense to put a blaring Arturo Sandoval lick in my funny Valentine. So it just doesn't, right? Um, so it's like you can choose wisely and you can choose what's good for what situation. But we'll talk about some special chord considerations for this song in particular. And I'll show you some of the tricks and like recurring things that I do, right? Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speed the tempo up a little bit since we brought it way down. So that it's back to like 130. Yeah, 135. Yeah, 130. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. It's somewhere in the middle. It's not blazing fast. But yeah, okay. So look at the first line. Look at the very first line here. It's like that very first line has a couple different tricks that we can do. Here's the one that I really like to bank on, guys. I like to bank on this trick. <clears throat> which is realizing that the third of the G7 chord, one, two, three, is a B natural, and the seventh of the C7 chord 
C D E F G A B flat is a B flat. So you have two tones that are a half step away from each other that are really, really um, nice. They're good to play. They're, they're, they're in the pocket, right? <clears throat> We're thinking linearly now. It's like you have that B natural and you have that C7. Or you have that B flat, right? You have a B natural and you have a B flat. B natural, B flat. B natural, B flat going back and forth through this tune. Um, so basically what you can do is you can bounce back and forth and you can play other notes too around it, but I'm gonna kind of base it on the G7 chord and C7 chord B natural to B flat. I'm gonna base it on that. So here we go. This is just for the first four bars, maybe a little bit longer, we'll see. comment if you understand that I'd really like to know if that makes sense <laughs> see how I'm going back and forth between B and B flat and I'm playing the B flat over the C7 chord I'm playing B natural over the G7 chord write me a comment if you if you understand that and if you uh, dig it if you see it and everything <clears throat> okay so that's the first little trick right that's the trick for the first line um, for the second line, you can do this. You can really focus on that um, transition between C, C7 to C sharp, fully diminished seven, to G7, right? You can focus on that. And um, essentially, you can realize that it's going up in half steps in a lot of places, right? So, yeah, it's like, you're going to start on a B flat and then you can go, well, okay, let's do it like this. You can play a C on that C7 chord, right? Like right there, play a C on it <clears throat> and then a C sharp on the C sharp and then a D on the G7. And then you could go up to, um, well, you could stay on a D for the B minor seven. You could stay on a D for the E seven. So look at this. See that? Not that one, this one. This one. I like that sound, that little chromatic sound. So I'm going to do that now, right? I'm going to put that in. Tell me if you hear that. <clears throat> lead it through and go kind of a thing and it sounds good it actually sounds like we know what we're doing <clears throat> okay good another trick here for this second line I think I'm pointing to the right place another trick for the second line is realizing that the C sharp fully diminished seven chord is the most important uh, chord of the entire tune 
it is by far like the most interesting, the most important chord of the entire tune. If you mess up some stuff, but you nail the C sharp fully diminished seven chord, it's like, then you know what you're doing. And people will know that you know what you're doing. And people will appreciate that, right? Because it's like, that's the one that sounds different. But different is good. It's like different is actually the best. It's like, it's the most interesting, right? So we are going to smash that C sharp. We're gonna make sure that we play the C sharp in the C sharp fully diminished seven chord because that's the note that really sounds good. Usually the tonic, like the bottom of the chord is not. In this case it is. In this case it's definitely the cool note. So you're gonna put a lick in, actually I'll do this one without the recording. What you're gonna do is play some kind of a pattern over C sharp fully diminished seven. If here's just the regular, <clears throat> here's, I'll play the regular uh, thing for you first, as far as just like, you know, uh, a chord going up, but then I'll play a pattern so you can see what I mean. <clears throat> repeating over and over and over again so you can do that and then you can do a pattern you can do a pattern so that um, it actually sounds interesting and not just like oh this is the same thing he just plays the chord over every time he repeats the chorus it's like no I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna play something interesting <clears throat> so check out this pattern that we're just gonna like make up <clears throat> I've played it before but I'm saying you can make this up on the top of your head and it would sound good. <laughs> Boom, right? And then you can play that high C sharp up there and kiss off and that, that sounds pretty good. And uh, yeah, you just you want to make it into a pattern. So you could go do ba do be do ba do be do ba do be do ba do do all up in minor thirds. That would sound good too. So yeah, that's how we approach that. <clears throat> Even if you don't arpeggiate it, just do something like this. Mm, e C sharp C sharp. It's like I'm just doing the third of the chord and I'm going down to the tonic playing the C sharp right um, so I'm, I'm making sure that I hit that C sharp sounds really cool up the octave <clears throat> like you know sounds good up the octave and everything it's, it's a good little it's a good high note to put in there, you know, for you high note guys. I know we've got some high note guys in here because people were saying they like Wayne Bergeron at the start. So good. It's like that's what you can do over the um, middle of the song. Let's talk about what you can do at the very end of the song for those last four bars. This is the interesting part. You might already know what I'm about to say, some of you. Um, and that's good if you do because that means you remembered. Or you can figure it out even though you don't know what I'm going to say. Hey, Jonathan Meyer. Good to see you, man. I'm glad you're here. Uh, thanks for joining. John is from Instagram. He's not from Instagram the country. I just know him from Instagram and everything. And he's a great guy. Has a little trumpet club going on. A little trumpet hangout. Trumpet choir. Something like that. How's that going, John? I'd really like to know. Yeah, just type me. How's it going? I hope it's going good. <clears throat> and everything. So... Okay, um, for that last line, look at the very last line, look at the last four chords, right? <laughs> Those last four chords are G7, E7, A minor 7, D7, right? We got to remember those notes. If you don't know those notes, 
then it's like continue to study this stuff and continue to, to drop in on these live streams and after a while you're gonna know them because we'll have been over the notes so many times kind of thing so G B D F E G sharp B D A C E G D F sharp A C right okay so here's what you can do over the last part for special considerations you can play a lick you can play a really cool lick and uh, basically you can um, yeah you can go up and down and up and down and what I like to do is do a scale at the end of it so here's what I've been doing <clears throat> curly cue there. <clears throat> Let me try it again, get cleaner. I'll do it again real faster for you. <clears throat> show you my fingers this is a lick that I created that I just thought of you know and I thought I basically I didn't sit here and think about all the notes when I originally did that I just thought hey I want to go up and down and up and down and up and down and then I just did what made sense for that per the chord tones trick at the beginning from the B to the B flat right B to B flat B to B flat good so that's how we do that <clears throat> right I like to do a little scale at the end you could arpeggiate the ending if you want to I just like to put a little scale there and whatnot so good it's like there we go that's the little special considerations that you can do um but now licks right it's like let's add a couple licks in here um I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a couple licks and then I'm gonna play a chorus and you tell me if you can hear them in there it's like you try to figure out where it is and try to spot it but first Jonathan Meyer it's been going pretty well a solid five members show up consistently and it's a lot of fun yeah really enjoying teaching some simple ensemble music yes that is awesome John I'm so glad you're doing that that's really good it's weird how you know in, te in teaching you almost learn more than you did uh, before because it's like you're going to lessons. Well, I guess this is in my case. It's like, you know, I have mm, around 20 lessons a week kind of a thing. Um, 20 Skype lessons slash in, in, in person lessons. But in your case, too, it's like you're teaching. The more you do that, it's like it sharpens your sword. It makes you better because people want to know certain answers to questions and you've got to provide that for them. And once in a while, you won't know the answer, but you can look it up and you can figure it out, you know, and that kind of a thing. So very nice. Okay, let's do this then. Let me show you some licks that work really good for that. <clears throat> Here's the James Morrison one, right? Um, oh, what's going on there? Oh, that's weird. It's just kind of glitching up and down. It's like every once in a while the Billy's bounce just goes kip, kip. goes up and down sort of thing. <clears throat> okay, so here it is down the octave. A James Morrison lick. on the 
tonic by playing the G, playing the IG and everything. So that is uh, the James Morrison lick I stole a long time ago. Um, here's another lick that you can do that I think sounds kind of nice over the second line. From the C7 to the C sharp, uh, fully diminished 7 to the G7, try this. And it might even go on a little past that, but it's kind of a nice little soaring line lick. <clears throat> that sounds good. Okay. <clears throat> Not that. <laughs> because it gives you a chance to play something in that upper register that's hard it's hard to come up with things in the upper register you come up with it down in the normal register and then you push it up into the upper register right that's what I like to do I like to push it up in there once I've gotten it down in the lower register so yeah that sounds pretty cool up the octave <clears throat> perfectionistic where it's like I want to I want to do it without chipping anything just like hitting it spot on yeah in jazz it's okay if you if you chip a note you know it's like try to be as accurate as possible but when the track is actually rolling and when you're actually playing it's like forget if you chipped a note or not that's just me getting too OCD let me try it once here whether I chip it or not I'll just play it <clears throat> There we go and look it actually came out better because I wasn't overthinking it it's like get out of your own head you know I uh, just do the thing just play the thing it's like by the point of the performance you already know what you're doing or you don't you have either practiced and prepared or you have not right so just do the thing you know and however it happens is how it happens kind of a thing um, okay so that's another lick let's put those licks in <clears throat> and into what we're doing and play a chorus and see if you can find those licks also see if you can find this lick let's see oh and there was one that I thought of right before we got on there was one that I yes I remember it okay I'll do one I'll give you two more licks so here's a lick for you <clears throat> that you can do over the C7 It's more simple form. You can just go. Like this. I just want you to see my valves. Right? I'm just flicking the first valve right there. slick that end part and I was using my false fingering a okay so now here's another lick here's the one that I thought of like right before we went on today and it's kind of a cool lick tell me what you think uh, just made it up essentially uh, shucks what is it I it's like right in that moment when you need to remember something that's when you forget kind of a thing it was a lick Clark Terry ish yeah there we go it was inspired by my man Clark Terry right here. He's my favorite jazz trumpet player. I should have answered when I asked that question. Clark Terry's my favorite. 
And this is just something that I could totally see him doing. I don't know if I totally ripped it off of him, but I could totally see him doing this. Really simple. It's kind of rhythmic. It only has two notes. On the G7, do this. Go... That's another kind of Clark Terry-ish inspired one at the end there that I did. Um, that I've, I've known that one for years. It's like I have licks that I've done for a long time. And then I have licks that I'm working on. And things that I've just put in or that I just thought of. And I'm trying to put it into my playing kind of a thing. <clears throat> so, yeah. And thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate that. You know, you guys have been watching like the whole time here. 11 people for a long time. I really do appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to press play and we're going to try to put a, a couple of those licks in and then we'll try to put a couple more in whatever. I'm going to try to put these licks in that I showed you. I might stop for a bar or two occasionally just so that I can try to think of what the other licks are, you know? So take this as sort of not a performance, but this is, this is like we're in the lab right now. All right, here we go. should I go on should I stop it so I start playing messy things it's like try to make a decision as you go otherwise it does sound bad like my ending there okay so I'm gonna try to put in the James Morrison lick and I'm gonna try to put in uh, let's see what else I'm gonna try to put in the one where what was the other one that was the the little funny one that I just created oh dwee da 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 dee da da I'll try to put that in <clears throat> here we go Um, play something really loud, <laughs> you know, and really high. Just go for it. Just do the thing. Make it sound awesome. And then just bring it down. Pianissimo. And it's not a word that you should bring to a jazz gig. But, but play soft. You know what I mean? Play soft then. Take it way down in volume and, like, get their attention and get them listening and like, woo, slipped off the plate. Oh, like you just, you got real loud. Or what you can do is you can fake them out. You can go to that major seven, which is an F sharp, right? You can play an F sharp and then not play the high G. You can go, wee, and then go, ba -da 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 -da. like just really quietly after it, right? 
you can fake them out kind of a thing so <clears throat> yeah guys that's what you can do okay let's see where I'm at in my outline here because I'm not gonna make this very much longer um, but yeah it's like uh, that's how we put the special considerations in there questions write any questions that you have now I'd love to see some questions love to see you know what you're thinking like what you want to think about this stuff uh, or what you're thinking about this stuff and and if there's anything you want to know about like how to spell a certain chord or how do I think of licks or whatever write it there and then if there's anything you know then I'll read that and we'll do that real quick but then we'll jam you and me together we will actually play the tune uh, we'll play the head and then we will uh, you know trade choruses we'll go back and forth right <clears throat> and that's kind of a fun thing to do it's hard to be the only one going on for 10 or 12 choruses it's a lot more it's it's easier to sound good and crystal clear and everything when you're trading choruses or when you're limiting yourself like you only get a little bit of time plus it gives us a chop break back and forth so yeah let's see if there's any questions here okay no questions that's okay oh you say John I have a solo marching band this year it's for a house of the rising sun ha! an A to a D over high C yeah dude that's nice you get to play an A to a D that's really cool in fact I think I had a that was like the thing in high school that's weird in marching shows like an A to a D was like came up often like in trumpet solos even around here like all the time you used the first one that I remember was from my freshman year the seniors did this the, the second player guy would go D A and then the first player guy would go A D like this they would go after they played a big solo they went they went like this right <clears throat> and then you could do it more of course You can do it up an octave like that. That's kind of fun. Um, Jordan, you don't ever reset your embouchure while going crazy high and suddenly getting back to low notes. I do not. I actually, I. that's a good question. It's like I do it in the same set. And it's like it's pretty important that I get set right. Like that's my Achilles heel. Like, there was a, a time or two in there where it's like I didn't get set right. And then even mentally, I'm like, oh, shucks, you're going to crack notes now. It's like I'm kind of picky about how I'm set. But if I get set right <clears throat> in my embouchure, which is kind of a flexible yet very focused embouchure, then I'm just going to keep that. I'm not going to reset anywhere. I'm just going to. I'm just going to play for as many choruses as I want, and I won't take the horn off my face. Right? I'm just going to leave it on my face <clears throat> in the same set. And I'm also going to, um, here's what I'm going to do to get a break. Like, I can do that, but I want to stay set. I want, I can breathe and kind of like release the pressure off my face. There's not a lot of pressure. But I am kind of like glued. I, I have my horn like glued to my armature. Um, there's a thing that I do called the Maynard Ferguson grip. Well, I call it the Maynard Ferguson grip. It's I grip the mouthpiece, you know, and that's a different topic or you could hit me up in a Skype lesson or something, but that's a really like helpful thing. I found if you can, if you can learn how to grip the mouthpiece, then you can play in all the registers and you won't have to reset. Um, let's see, Daniel. Yay, Daniel, you made it awesome, dude. Pound it. Boom. Because I know you said you thought it was at 11 p.m. last time. So it's like, here, I redid it for you. Did another live stream, you know, saying, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you made it to this one. How would you go about this in a different key? Yes, Sig. At Owen. I'm going to remember, Owen. It's like, no problem, dude. I appreciate the question. I really do. So how would I go about this in a different key? How I would go about it in a different key, it's like, what's cool about iReal... Um, 
I real B is that you can put it in a different key. You can actually, it's in F major now. I could put it in D major. <clears throat> and then I would have to think about it completely differently. And that one looks pretty hard, right? Um, but I could totally switch it, switch the keys. And I would literally just think about it in the same exact way that I did before. And I might kind of go through the motions like we did if I was first doing it, like if you're a beginner, go through the motions like we did before, naming each chord and spelling each chord. Uh, oops, I gotta put this back up so you see it. It's like you wanna go through the motions <clears throat> and spell each chord just the same way that you did in the other tune, right? Well, it's the same tune. And, and so that you know the, the new chords Right, so this is really putting me on the spot because I don't know it in any other keys, but let me let me try, right? It's like, I'm gonna try to play uh, easy, I'm gonna play a little bit simpler so that I can make sure I'm playing the right notes even if my solo isn't crazy awesome off the wall yet. That's okay, it's like, I'm just gonna try to play the right notes and show you. So I just put it to a random key that I've never played before. Here we go. <clears throat> like I'm playing fairly simply right now uh, you know because I've never played it in that key before <clears throat> I know I know all the chords I've played all the chords in here at one time or another so I know the chords and that's what helps me um, Daniel but uh, but I've never played the tune in that key so now it's like I'd have to sit down and think think to myself all right I got to take it up a perfect fifth I've got to take it up five notes or down four, which just is not like, it's not a good range. Like I can improvise in there, but that's not a good range to put it in, right? It's like, it's like man alive. Um, to go up five notes from D, we would have to play it in one, two, three, four, five in A. Um, well, we would start on, no, we wouldn't start on an A. It would be an A7 chord. Oh, no, here's what I'm thinking. From the original, you know, down below melody, we need to go up a perfect fifth on every single note. <clears throat> and that's going to be difficult. I'm going to fall on my face, but I'll try it. I'm not gonna do it it's like it's gonna it's gonna sound terrible if I do it right so it's like that's where I've got work to do um, but you would take every single note up a perfect fifth so that first note would be a a G sharp a E and then let's see F sharp G it's like it's just gonna be up higher so it's not really a good range to do it in but good question that was still good. Thank you for answering my question. Yeah, dude, absolutely. All right, so we'll, we'll we're gonna wrap it up here um, by playing. We're gonna jam together now. We're gonna do the thing, and we'll put it on yeah 135. You know, it's fast, but it's not the most terribly fast thing ever. So yeah, we're gonna put it on 135, and yeah, you can see it. I'm gonna change the key back to what it was. It's gonna feel so much better when we go back to F major, right? Because it's like, ah, the other one is nasty. 
it's very nasty so <clears throat> yeah this this looks a lot more familiar and a lot more nice now considering um so we're gonna jam we're gonna play the head twice then we're gonna go back and forth i'll take a solo then you solo then i'll take a solo so you'll see where the gap is turn your speakers up get your horns out you gotta play that this will be really fun okay <clears throat> so yeah we got it all set here you know you know move my chair a little bit ah, i'm a picky guy picky about stuff <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, here we go. We're going to play the head twice. The melody. Right? And then we're going to solo. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat>
boom. If you've never done that before, it's like, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you poured your, you pulled your horn out. You know, um, for those of you who didn't pull your horn out, pull your horn out and do that. And, uh, you know, when I put these alerts out, it's like you can look at the sheet music there, even if you don't have it at home, and you can start to study it. So then when we do this, it's like you kind of you kind of have an idea for what we're doing ahead of time, right, when I put out the alerts. Um, but, yeah, I hope that that was fun. I hope that you got something out of that, guys. Um, yeah, I just I hope that you liked it. Um, so thanks for watching. If you do want to take Skype lessons with me or if you'd like to take a Skype lesson or two or you want to learn about, you know, high notes or you want to dig more into jazz or go over a specific jazz tune, you want me to break it down for you, uh, we can totally do that uh, through Skype lessons kind of a thing. That was so fun. Thank you, Daniel. I really appreciate that. Yeah, good. I'm glad it was fun. And, and yeah, with Skype lessons, it's like we can do essentially whatever you want to do. And it looks a lot the same as this, right? It, it, um, it's, it's through the computer, and uh, we just pop up iReelView if we want to play jazz. And it actually works really well where I can hear. We always, there's a little technical finagling, and then we figure it out, and I can hear you improvise, and you can hear me. We can go back and forth, and we can talk about it, and that kind of a thing. Um, yeah, it's just kind of fun to do. So, all right. Um, basically, <clears throat> eh, is there anything else to say? Not really. Uh, invite a friend next time. If you like this, you know, tell your friends about it. Uh, also, I'd really appreciate shares. Like, if you, if you share this, uh, you know, while it's live, off of your Facebook page or something like that so that other people can watch it, I really appreciate that. I think it's a, it's a good idea just so we can get more people involved in everything. And thank you for watching, guys. Um, I really appreciate it. And we will definitely do another one uh, sometime, yeah, soon-ish. It's like I can't – the reason why I can't just schedule it every single Monday or Saturday or whatever is because I just don't always know what I'm doing because I have – you know, I'm in the Army Band. They take me away sometimes. And this next week I have a jazz camp. I am the uh, trumpet technician there, so I've got to be gone for a week doing that. Um, but, like, yeah, it's like uh, we will definitely do more of these in the future. Uh, I would really like to. And, yeah, you know, thanks for watching. Daniel Burgos, time to work on Maria, Trumpet Games Challenge. Yes, absolutely, time to work on Maria. That is right. <clears throat> if you want the full sheet music to Maria, um, you can go to my store and, and download it for free. <clears throat> um, Trumpet Gaines, it's like in, I think he has a Google Drive where you can get like his version of it that he transcribed, and that's cool. I have the original version, like in my store, like the version uh, where essentially it was like written for Maynard, and you even see like the for Maynard, you know, writing on top of the uh, on top of the sheet music. I have that. I have uh, the digital download because I I actually created the backing track for that challenge and everything. Uh, so you can download the entire backing track and the entire original sheet music in my store uh, kind of a thing uh, if you want to. You go to learnleadtrumpet.com and then you go to the store, learnleadtrumpet.com, go to my store, and then um, you'll click down, you'll scroll down to see like Maria, uh, you know, Music minus Jordy, Maria. You'll click on that. You'll download that. You can have it for free. Uh, you know, so you can take part in the challenge. So, yeah, totally go do the challenge. Thanks for bringing that up, Daniel. If you don't know about the challenge, you know, watch the video that I posted, like, last night at, like, 1 in the morning, something like that. And then, uh, yeah, go take the Trumpet Games Challenge. should be really cool. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later. Over and out. Bye.